Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mike Grandino. I'm the Bronx Republican Commissioner. Uh, this is the meeting of the Outreach Committee of the Bronx of the New York City Board of Elections. I'm just going to have the commissioners introduce themselves. Welcome all Simon Shams and Republicans. John Flateau, Kings County Democrat. Alan Shokin, Manhattan Democrat. And from BOE staff, we have Valerie Vasquez, Director of Communications. And Steve Richmond, General Counsel. Okay, uh, Bob, guys, you can move up. You're even welcome to sit up here if you'd like. Uh, what else would you like? Last month was our first public meeting of the year. Uh, we had we discussed a lot of things, a lot of our plans, moving forward ideas we had, and we gave uh, Val a couple of thoughts. We're supposed to get back to it. Val, do you want to just give us a little yeah. insight and presentation? Okay, so, uh, commissioners. But this basically, we have tweaked the idea that was born out of the Bronx office of essentially creating, a, and, I'll, and I'll share it with you guys after, we just have limited copies, um, creating a tabletop, a small consolidated tabletop display for voter registration forms that can be distributed on a grassroots level to stores, laundromats, anywhere that will essentially have us, but also to libraries and, um, and to other agencies that would be willing to um, present, have voter registration forms available for their constituents. In the past, this is what we have, um, what Beth Fasella of the Voter Registration um, Department, she has distributed this to all libraries um, throughout the city of New York, and as you notice, it is large, much larger. Um, the costs are comparable for the first time. Um, we're talking about $37 per unit for production. It would be um, through a requirements contract with our vendor, Vanguard, who does all the printing for us. Um, they have worked with us to come up with those um, mock-ups. This is a second idea, so that way, essentially same concept, it's just the design is a little bit different. Um, we were thinking about um, what will we use as, as um, logos or, or sayings, and it's basically we're thinking a call to action. Take one and, and have your voice heard. Take one and become part uh, of the voting community. You know, we can work on the, the wording, but again, it's a call to action, hoping that anyone who um, sees these displays at their neighborhood libraries or anything, or community-based organizations, will take one and eventually um, register. Um, I was talking about, you know, we can, or we can also develop an in-house, this wouldn't be for the libraries, but we could also talk about developing an in-house code so we can track our metrics, so we can basically gauge the success of the project. If we wanted to do it as a pilot, we could track them and, you know, give them, have them code, um, code O for outreach. And then we can basically see, maybe within a six-month time frame, how many voter registration forms actually came out of this effort. Um, and again, um, we can talk about logistics in terms of how we would work this out on for the grassroots level. We could probably, as Commissioner Rizzino you know, mentioned, maybe we could work with the bids, start with the bids, and merchant, and associations. merchant associations, and take it from there. Um, we then have to figure out logistics, have a contact number, you know, when, when their supply is low, please call a specific number, and we will send them out additional batches of voter reg forms in whatever language we need. So, um, if that's something that the commissioners like either, we could potentially replace like this. We could potentially replace this for Beth's purposes because she is actually in the process of preparing a purchase order to to um, for the additional order. Does that mean that this does? Now, I mean, this is for in this. This is one that we would be using at the poll sites, so it has um, the voter's bill of rights. These are, we wouldn't have this at a library. It would just have the five. The, the voter registration forms in the five colored languages. So oh, it's just consolidated. It probably actually will be more prominently placed because be I've gone to levels. Thirty-seven dollars. And how many units? What's um, the economy of scale? Um, Beth didn't give me her number in terms of how many libraries we send them to. She no, said but she I'm saying for this, for the this thirty-seven dollars. Yeah. Well, I it's originally like thousand, five thousand. The original request was we were gonna um, ideally we were thinking Commissioner Rendino was willing to do a pilot project in the Bronx, 
and when I spoke to his staff members, they said Bill Brooklyn like, and the pilot. Okay, uh, I think he, his the Bronx, the original request was like for two hundred and fifty. Uh, so we could do, you know, if we wanted to, it's got to be a couple of thousand, thousand at least. So mm -hmm. hopefully that means that we, thirty-seven per unit number. Could you price it at maybe a thousand, two thousand, five thousand? In increments of a thousand, no and problem. See what, and see what that number looks like. Yeah, How many do we normally purchase those? That's what I was waiting on Beth to get me the her order. Numbers, yeah. yeah. How many? It's, it's under the plan, we at least one to every library branch of all the five boroughs. Our commissioner directed we've done at least one to each of the 59 community boards. Um, and we have also made it available upon request to any other educational institution. So if a college, university, <coughs> even a public school does it, but mostly it's going to be the community stuff. I was going to say, I'll make a little bias and I, I'll make a pitch for CUNY. But I think the reason we did that was that, again, this was, the, it was, a, it was a standalone, so I can tell you at the public libraries I go in Brooklyn, it's usually right where they give out all the other free stuff, right at the beginning. And on the back, the, or there was a confirmation that the call when you ran out, and it was, look, we provided the forms as for the coverage under the Voting Rights Act for the appropriate languages. So in the Bronx and in Staten Island, we only put the two languages out. Brooklyn and Manhattan, you got the three, and Queens got all uh, the English, Spanish, uh, Chinese, Korean, and Bengali. For this mock-up, though, the vendor suggested that we just have one uniform, all five languages, to cut down on the printing costs. Because you would have to have multiple runs. If you just had Spanish-English, then it would require separate designs. So in the interest of becoming being cost-effective, the idea was that... And then you have a legal issue about providing services not required. It's not that slippery slope. That we well, I, mean, they, like, I could see the, uh, the uh, device, the packet, the display having the five languages, but in Brooklyn, it would only require the three. Oh, you so put the three put languages. So you said, oh, you get okay. to cover but it's one something. unit that the printer... The, the, the more varied uh, yeah, permutations like on that product. That I think I think go and said, and said maybe commissioners, what you want to do is see because I think the problem is, is that if you the put the it in, version, if you put it in Bengali, you would either that or put sticker just cover it up before it goes out. Right. Before, so that right. that language then is empty, and you could just leave extra English forms. Or or, or if directed, I could go back to the vendor and ask them to really give us a breakdown. If, for example, the Bronx and Staten Island would just be Two Spanish and, and, and English, and you know Queens would be 05. And, and Brooklyn, Brooklyn and Manhattan, Manhattan would be a three, three language. So in the, in the end, it may be a wash. Place. Right. In the end, it may be a wash. Since you're only going to create. In the Bronx, two two pockets to hold. I think maybe we're better off going with this other design. We could just we have one simple one that the whole city sees. My in and out. Just if so we need to cover, we don't want to have different ones. One or two. Well, no. The only difference would be that in that one, it would only have the two languages. Okay. Yeah. Explore it. Yeah. yeah. These seem like inserts. These these tabs. Oh, okay. yeah, they're tabs. Yeah. So, then just take them out so you leave blank. That's it. You know, just put a multiple. Okay. In, in the Bronx Commission, you can do two English, two Spanish, and then you cover it. That's you can do it as a tab. He said that there are tabs with the information on yeah, the top. Insert. So, insert. so in other words, if we can be flexible, we'll do the inserting. In the Bronx, we can do two English, two Spanish, and the five-person one. Well, we don't do that. And the reason we're doing this, just so you know, who wasn't, who wasn't here last month is, we're thinking of a lot of times you go into stores and candy stores, and they won't take this big thing in there. And I've talked to them and said, hey, you know, maybe we should have voter registration, take my dry cleaner. He said, yeah, way too big, though. So we came back, we went to Val, and that's why we decided to come so Oh, nine-inch deep. I was looking at the dimensions. That seems reasonable, right? Nine, it's, yeah, only, right. it's 15 inches high. Five. Nine inches mm -hmm. Just a little taller than that. It's only... Uh, uh, 12 inches wide. Yeah. Then it's for that a stock would be similar to. More similar. friendly to a small business owner wanting to preserve their countertop <laughs> space. Uh, and I assume we also have small posters. You might even give it or get them to put them in their windows. As long as they're small enough, I know that's the same issue. Mm -hmm. 9 by 12, maybe big lettering. Something complimentary to go with that? Sure, we could have some designs and so similar to the. Branding. Yeah, they, so they were on their branding. door, and then there's a counter on the countertop. Are they already in? Was it something already in welfare centers and other government agencies where people visit? Oh, that's interesting. I think that's you could talk about local right, planning. You'll talk about what the city of New York is doing. Great, that's what the city is here. 
Okay, so then you'll get those other numbers. Yeah, I can get the other totals. Move forward with that after next month's meeting. Proposal, we have yeah, we bring this back. Okay. Okay. Find out how many we order regularly and get an idea. If you want to pass these around just for the public to look at. Is there anything else that we just So now, as a, so are we only, are we limiting it just to the, the grass, the, the uh, earthers that we were referring to, like at the stores, the small businesses, or we're also looking to replace this for the library? Well, I would definitely talk to Beth and see what she wants but to do and see if she's interested. She was flexible. I met with her on Friday. I mean, she she orders, said that. I don't know if you want to limit the forms, though, or do you want to? Again, and I think it's up to the library that have posted it. Some of the post offices have posted it. Commissioner, it, I, when I've been back at Brooklyn College, I haven't been going to the student end of the stuff, so I don't know where they've been, if, if and where they've been putting it on. Qu at Queens College, I know they have it in the student union. In the student, which probably in. makes sense there as opposed to an academic building. Well, at Medgar Evers College, it would be different. Really? <laughs> we only have four buildings. Okay, so that's <laughs> Who put them in the lobby of each of the buildings? Oh. We only have four buildings. Okay. So far. So far. <laughs> 7,000 students, though. <laughs> okay, I would just see how yeah, the price it. changes as we get more and more. We don't want to go with too many of them. We just want to try okay. maybe a thousand range where we'll be able to split up. But we need to, I know we already have some contacts in the Bronx and relationships with the merchant. Right. Event, so they'll be able to take it right away and hopefully work on the next month. We'll figure out. So we can make those connections and they'll be ready to proceed as well. <coughs> okay. okay, so I'll have that for the next. I'll just email it. Is there anything else you want to discuss from the last meeting? Um, we, you have the, the yeah, we'll review the, that. We'll talk that. about that. Um, yeah. Uh, other than that, oh, uh, the idea that was also presented from the Bronx office, the idea of having uh, somewhat of a, a uniform. So, ha uh, the as you know, the technicians, the the boat, the borough technicians wear a polo shirt. Um, blazing with the board's logo, as well as um, uh, their title, voting technicians on their shirts, so they're easy identified when you visit polling sites on election day. So the idea was that we would have some shirts made that would say outreach, the outreach team, or voter, you know, voter registration and outreach. Well, that, that, yeah, that came out because the Bronx team was in, were in, was in the general post office doing an outreach event, and they had explained to them always that they're from the board of elections. Right. They said, well, maybe it'd be easier. If they could, kind of like that, there goes that eyewitness news band thing. They right. say, there goes those <laughs> BOP people. Right. Between now and 2016, just to stay in everybody's face and be, it, have that recognizable uniform. And right. Was taking that. In, in 2010, we had shirts made for our voter outreach teams. And um, when they did all their outreach, they we were required to actually wear it so we easily identified, mm -hmm. especially in street fairs and block parties, things like that, when people are handing over a voter registration form that does have your personal information, we felt that it was important to have them you know, be easily identified as board staff. So I put in the, I spoke to each of the borough offices. They gave me ideas of, they gave me an exact number of outreach staff that they have, and we're gonna order the, the shirts in, in the specific sizes for them. Fantastic. As well as the general office outreach team and the general office voter registration for the voter registration department. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have anything you want to this um, is here from our public? Yes, uh, actually, I did invite um, two uh, guests here today. One uh, person, distinguished uh, person, is uh, Onita Coward Mayors from the New York City Campaign Finance Board, but she handles specifically handles outreach on behalf of voter outreach and education on behalf of the CFB. So we asked if you could give, I know you did a round of public hearings, so you gathered a lot, pulled in a lot of information citywide from, directly from voters and organizations that work in, in that civic engagement space. So could you give us a, a brief yeah, overview? Yeah, you guys are before before, okay. before yeah. anybody, can we ask you to identify yourself so we know who you are? Oh, everybody here, yeah. okay. Good afternoon to all. I'm pleased to be here. Uh, Anna Maria Thomas, I'm just a citizen. Great, and also very happy to be here. My name is Seth uh, Flaxman, and I'm from a nonprofit, uh, Democracy Works. Uh, Whom I invited also. Thank you. <laughs> the uh, Common Cause referred. To, uh, so we want to hear from you about the work you're doing on voter education now. Uh, I'm Kate Doran from the League of Women Voters, and today I'm representing Fannie Connor, who's our voter service chair, 
that we couldn't be here today. Monica Barclay, Center for Independence of the Disabled, New York. I'm Sabrina Wires. I work for um, voter assistance and at the New York City Campaign Finance Board under NYC Votes. I work in voter outreach with Onita. Onita Howard, Mayor of Campaign Finance Board, NYC Votes. <laughs> CFB, you have the floor. Well, well, thank you for the invitation, and good to see all the commissioners. Good to meet you. Um, and I'm happy to share uh, some of the work that we do at the Campaign Finance Board under the umbrella of NYC Votes, which is our border education outreach brand. So uh, I, I love seeing this because it, to me, I, immediately when you started talking about it, I started thinking about the Local Law 29, which is the, uh, the agencies who are required under the charter to distribute voter registration forms and in, the, in, in required languages. And this is a big question that comes up with the agencies. They like to be able to, um, you know, how should they distribute them? And we've been going through a round of trainings with them on uh, how do you engage with the public around uh, voter registration. Uh, but it's a, you know, how they're going to brand it, how they're going to place it. It, they want things to be very public. This would be a very, very helpful tool for them. And for them, they're thinking of a model of how do we distribute and get back. So we'll let you have some if you pick up the tab. <laughs> yeah, I know that's right. <laughs> very, very generous. <laughs> right. Maybe you can figure out how many 2,000 would cost, right? <laughs> the first on you. Sounds like we're in the, the thousands. <laughs> So, but maybe we can really have a serious issue, a conversation around uh, something that could be co-branded, okay. uh, and the agencies can really start to reach out to the public. And they have a big plan. Each of them have agency-based plans on how is the best way to reach the public that they come in contact with. So I think that would be a nice thing. Okay, to so then we can talk about Sure, absolutely. Uh, some of the other things that we do as well, um, we just finished our public hearing for um, the election, the, the November election, general election, and of course, um, Mr. Ryan sits on that committee, so he is available for those conversations. So he's there, and members of the public, when they come forward and they have questions, uh, around elections or more directly with the Board of Elections, he is there to facilitate those answers, which has been great. Mm -hmm. And for the past several years, Valerie has represented him, and Steve is often there as well, Mr. Richmond. Um, so uh, most recently, uh, one of the questions that came up from the public were more state kind of level mm -hmm. questions, but that we get a lot of. Uh, one was calling for unified primaries, one was calling for mail-in ballots, uh, and people were citing things that they see in Oregon and ways that they felt that it would engage more New Yorkers and be easier to. Uh, so th there was a big conversation about mail-in ballots, but they talked about all the constitutional changes and things. So I, I think what happens is that we hear a lot, or when people come before us, they have more sweeping kind of changes. They they are coming kind of like. How would it work best for them, right? And, and not necessarily concentrating on the mechanics of all the things that have to be changed to make something happen. But what's great about that is sometimes they come with a fresh look. Of uh, you know, so we're talking about a Voting Rights Act that hasn't been changed in decades. That we're still operating under a very, very old Voting Rights. Um, act and you know if we were to think of things brand new again how do people want to vote in this century you know how would they imagine they would be uh, voting so that's a lot of what comes before us I mean you know, certainly there are the one-offs you know something happened uh, at my poll station and uh, I'm very grateful for the relationship with Valerie because anything that comes up on the ground that we hear on election day, we're able to speak with her directly. And uh, many times she has sent out people because of the things that we find uh, or people, you know, whatever concerns come up as well. So it's a lot of that that we hear, you know, at our hearings as well. Um, and because of that, we started something last year called Advocacy, Voter Advocacy Day. 
and understanding that a lot of the work that needs to happen ha needs to happen at a state level. We started to go with our partners to Albany uh, and to talk about some of the electoral reforms they'd like to see. Uh, the reason for that, to you know, take a step back, with our outreach, we have hundreds of partners all around the city. And they are engaged in voter registration, get out the vote efforts, and, and everything in between, all kinds of events uh, as such. Uh, but you come to a place where people feel that they're up against the wall. Like, how much more am I going to do to get the people in my neighborhood registered to vote and voting? And I want to see something bigger happen. And these are the same people who come to our hearings as well. So we got a bus and we said, let's see how many people would like to go. Right. And we filled the bus. This year, we're up to two buses. And we're going from various populations. The league was there as well. <laughs> and, but the thing about it was we really concentrated beyond the good government groups. Because when you think of NYC votes or you think of the good government groups, well, these are the likely people who will go and have something to say. Uh, but the people who we asked to be on the bus were mothers, were fathers, who were taking off days from work. To, uh, there were young people who wanted to go support pre-registration for 16 and 17 year olds. So they were the actual constituents throughout the boroughs who, when they learned about various um, legislation that was pending and, you know, has so much to go through, they wanted to go and either throw their support behind it or against it or whatever. And it made a big difference when we were meeting with the assembly members and the senate members because they realized, well, these are people who live in my district, right? So, and we, we try to match people and issues and, and the districts that they live in so they would go and meet with the right people. And so then there was more, uh, you know, so, so they were willing to listen more, but that doesn't mean that the battle becomes any easier <laughs> up there. Uh, but we want to try to engage as many everyday New Yorkers to understand the process. And, and what they're saying is housing is important, education is important, but guess what? So are my voting rights and the way that I want to be able to vote. So we're hoping that we will continue to build a constituency of people who are very interested in, and willing to go. And, and a lot of it, what we're talking about with Mr. Ryan as well, are the things that um, the Board of Elections here feels would make things easier, that we would go and champion that as well. So um, that's, that's our advocacy day. I have a long list of things that we do, though. <laughs> but, um, but it goes anywhere from we do student, we're working with uh, Councilwoman Helen Rosenthal this year for her March 20th Student Voter Registration Day. And we're very excited. We are going to be somewhere upwards of anywhere between 12 and 20 schools. And the idea behind that is she has had various city council representatives select a school in their district. And we have designed a curriculum, NYC Votes and our Youth Voter Coordinator. And there are 30 schools now. Woo! Are these <laughs> high schools? Yes. Okay. And they're citywide? Yes. Throughout the city? Yes, absolutely, in each borough. And it, uh, it, it, Councilwoman Rosenthal, after reading our annual report last year, and saw the work that we did with National Voter Registration Day, which is a project that Sabrina forced me to lead. Um, she was inspired and wanted to do something on a student level. Now, I will say that with National Voter Registration Day, um, in what year are we in? 2015, 14, 13. In 2013, NYC Votes registered the second highest number of um, members of the public in a single day it's through our national, national vote it's through our national on national voter registration day so we were really excited about that and so we were happy that this went right into student voter registration day we are helping to coordinate the efforts we are um, writing the curriculum for it and we are doing all the training and facilitation uh, of the workshops in each of the schools so we're really excited about that. I heard that there's some interest from the Board of Elections 
to work with us on the analysis of the numbers as such. So we look forward to working together on that as well. Um, I will also add that last year for the first time we did a big, uh, well we, we started to concentrate more on our get out the vote efforts and what we've done is everyone we registered throughout all of our efforts, we did a phone banking, we did a specific mailing uh, to see how effective we were. Did that help? And the people who did the calls were the same people who went out and helped us to register people to vote. So they felt very vested in the process. And what was great about it, the postcard was able to tell them that we registered you at this event. So it put them in the mind and the place and, and asking them to remember to go out and vote. So we were recently given the voter files. Thank you very much. So we're in the process of now starting the analysis of how effective that was and, and seeing if we can grow that effort. Were you phone banking the, the, those people that you had registered or to kind of follow up? Yes, exactly. A tickler to remind them that mm -hmm. on or before election day? Before, the, the night Yeah, the night before. Right. And we learned a lot. We learned a lot about absentee uh, voters, people who were away uh, on election day and said that they had not requested an absentee ballot. Uh, so we, we learned about students who were away as well and why they chose you know not to uh, so we we found a lot of stuff you know in talking with people actually just speaking to them and them remembering that they had registered and gotten information you know so there was a lot of personal stories that came out of it and a, a lot of it also was in various languages so we had to have people speaking in various languages to this was in November 2013 no, 2014. 14. 14. Last year. Still had a lousy turnout. Yeah. Overall, right? Yes. But we have to get to the crux of the wall. Yeah. So, what, what can we do then collectively to help get more New Yorkers to take the uh, right to vote well, more seriously? <laughs> well, one, I, I, I like the fact that you have this in there. And I think that we have had, you know, a good working relationship. But I think if we can start to create plans together and pool our resources together and look at some certain pilots that we can do together and then measure those to see and then move What some. works, what doesn't. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So instead of us in our small way working over here and you over here, you know, and then the various groups, but maybe... Uh, <clears throat> The Mayor's Office of Operations is the lead, I understand, on Local Law 29. Are they in the, this conversation? Yes, they are. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're working very, we're providing all the training for them. So, and now they're working out the reporting functions of it. That's the big piece. Mm -hmm. Sabrina, do you have anything to? Well, no, I'm very excited about programming that we do because I think one of the missions that we're trying to do is just that. So you register to vote, but we want you to exercise the right to vote and understand that it's more than filling out the registration form. And what that, what is that next step and what motivates people to that next step? So for those who say that it's just not easy for them, we've created Advocacy Day. For those who want the reminder, we're creating that reminder. But I think it will take um, the various groups coming together to work with plans that will um, just have a greater impact. Um, I think that we, our goal is to not only make it easy for them to register, we do work with community groups out in the community and festivals, but we also partner with corporate companies where we go into their lobbies, into their cafeterias, we're at Citibank and J.P. Morgan James. We're trying to make it as easy as possible so there are no excuses. So this function here meets that, um, meets those needs where people feel like, oh, I don't know where to go or what to do and so forth. So I think that we're all walking, we're all going in the right direction. Did you publish any of your data that you found out about why people didn't turn out the vote? Did you put it to Not the yet. We're still. We just got the files, it? right? So we're in the process of <laughs> analyzing it. What we've done, like who votes, that we came from students at NYU. Mm -hmm. That we're just, we have a, a. So we do have a report on who votes. 
Was there any city. unique findings mm -hmm. there that jumped out at you, like one demographic or one age group that older <laughs> didn't show up or did? Well, um, I, I guess for me, it, it didn't seem like new news. <laughs> None of it really seemed new, but what we did take away from that is that there were various tiers of people and those who needed to be educated on voting, right, and finding who they are, where they are, and they need to be campaigned just for people who just have no idea about the process and there needs to be an educational component. And then those who just need reminders, right, so it's, uh, it's just the, about prioritizing it for the day or for the week or what's the process, you know. So um, we started to break up a lot of the work that we do with our partners based on what are the educational components that need to happen and where because then we found the pockets throughout, um, the low voting pockets that are huge <laughs> throughout the city uh, and then what kind of educational campaigns need to go into those areas and then those that if we needed to go to, like we did the big campaign with WNBC uh, where they did a PSA for us and it ran during Women's History Month, but they did a whole blitz during the presidential election year for us also. But going to larger name media sources and they started putting out messages on our behalf. And that's what Sabrina was also talking about. We went to J.P. Morgan Chase and we asked them if we could do a voter registration drive. And they were like shocked because we registered 500 people. People and they, they couldn't believe They're never going to go either. out of their way to look for a form, but it was in the cafeteria. J.P. Morgan gave cookies out, so that helped. Um, mm -hmm. And we did national forms as well, because some of the folks who work there live in Connecticut. The cookies cost less than $25. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, we were able to register those who live in the city, but outside of the city and so forth. And um, I think that you know, part of that is even like Onita said, there are people who need to learn about the process. So like with Student Voter Registration Day, it's not just about registering students, it's combined with a curriculum and there's a workshop and somebody will be walking them through that process, not just about registration, but I mean, Onita knows a little bit more about the curriculum than I do. So but let me ask you, besides, the, we know about people who, which demographics do vote for the most part, but what about the people who aren't voting? Besides the fact they may need a reminder, did, did you find out anything else about these people, why they don't vote? Is it a fear? Is it, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know why people don't it's vote. It's not prioritized. It's not important. I mean, they have things like uh, the housing, okay. the education. Mm -hmm. They have critical issues. You know, they're taking care of their children. They can't get back. So, so yes, in terms of uh, the, the system isn't friendly enough, right? They, they want to uh, communicate and they, they want to work with their election process the same way they do with everything else in life. They're accustomed to having immediate kinds of services. So they want to be able to register online. Well, you know, why do I have to go out of my way? Why isn't it easier for me? Why can't I just go onto a computer, onto my phone, the same way as everything else they do and register to vote? Uh, register to vote and vote, really, for that matter. But I'm, I'm talking about even the people who've already registered, did we ever find out why they don't come out? I mean, mm -hmm. you gave some of the answers to why they don't vote, but um, could we find out what we could do to motivate them to vote? Is it only education? Uh, yes. Well, they want to and, feel... And the social issues, because mothers have stayed with children. Right. right. And they want to feel part of the process. So it's almost a going beyond the polls. So it's not just that day, although that day is very important, getting them there, but understanding where they fit in everything. And, uh, and then they're more vested in the process. Uh, so a lot of what we're doing with the younger population is making those connections for them. That's what the curriculum is based around, issues. People are coming out because of issues, and people are coming out because there are, um, the, you know, the race says competition. And, you know, but really they're coming up because of issues and how it affects them. And if you make the connection on how it affects them, then they're more likely to come out and make the difference. Yeah. Is DOE work, uh, they're a part of the, the yes. high school? Yes, okay. and they reviewed our work. I, I was, that was the next question I was going to ask. Yes, because we've been doing it for many, many years. The, you know, going out to various workshops with the Department of Youth and Community Development as well. 
Um, but it was the first time that we decided with student voter registration day not to go to someone else's um, curriculum. CUNY has a curriculum, that's great as well, but we wanted to brand our own. And we felt that we were having a lot of success with registering those students. So we, we took, this is our first time for us. <laughs> There's 20 high schools that you're about to... Uh, no, well, developing this curriculum. Oh. Yeah, okay. so it will be, you know, a real curriculum. And I think this, in some cases, from the feedback that we get, this is the first time that some of these 17, 18 you know, are even hearing about coding and how important it is to their lives. So um, that really makes that connection. It's really about making that connection. That's, do you have any data that compares people that actively seek to register to vote on their own versus somebody asking them to register and so on at a table or outreach event and so on and so forth? Who's more likely to vote? Well, I don't. Is there any data out there at all? I don't, but maybe we can, through the information that we have, create something. Uh, but I will say that what uh, comes up a lot is that students say they were never invited. They were never asked. So it's something that they believe belongs to someone else. And uh, so a lot of times people just want you to ask them, which is, like sounds bizarre. <laughs> but they want an invitation to be part of, you know, people like to be part of things. Um, but they're just never invited. They're just, you know, not part of it. It, it sounds uh, to me like, um, like these kinds of issues, content are missing in our current K to 12 public school curriculum. I'm from another era. <laughs> Most of us, I mean, we've been out of elementary school and high school a long time, but when we were going through school, this was, you know, civics, American civics, American government was a standard part of the curriculum. And it sounds like if students are, are here, you're, I thought I heard you say they're hearing about voting for the first time. And you're the ones that are bringing this to them, you know. They're they're in high school already. I mean, this is one period Whew. where they can learn. Wow. About how things that so close to them really work. Especially if they think they have to be invited to us to register. Right. Sure, Instead sure. of knowing that's that's one of your rights and responsibilities of being a, an American citizen. <laughs> You know, somebody needs to, how about explaining it that way? Mr. Fato, this procedure, but last December, the State Bar Association's Special Committee on Voter Participation and Civic Engagement, led by uh, former Senator Dunn, issued its report. The House of Delegates acted on it. The one thing it didn't include is the demand that it be funded. It called for the reinstitution of civics education. It found a study that in the state of New York, they were able to find four high schools that were actually teaching what was called civics. The entire state. We've, I got a copy to share it. Uh, regrettably, to, that, was, to get a that was sent to the legislature last year by the State Bar as a remain a priority, the State Bar Association, but there has been no action in 2014, and it doesn't look optimistic in 2015. Was that a special committee? Special or? Committee on Voter Participation and Civic Engagement, the State Bar Association. Um, they did a, a year-long study. Um, one of its members is now special counsel for the mayor, Tim Berger. Uh, John Dunn, as I said, chaired it. Uh, the associates now the official policy of the state bar is calling upon the state to re-engage and create a statewide curriculum for civic engagement. The problem is it doesn't demand or call to set forth how it's going to be funded. It's another unfunded mandate in a sense. I brought up my earlier point because, you know, as administrators of elections here, we have limited resources. And so it's great to say we want to get people on the streets and stands in stores and other areas to get people to register to vote. Uh, and that's doing something actively. But we have millions of people on our rolls right now, and they're not voting. 4.2 million. And so why aren't they voting? Uh, it could be their prerogative. 
you know, they might not be voting because they don't want to vote. It might not be easy for them to vote. Uh, there, there's a lot that we can do that's very tangible and concrete via our processes. We've actually, in the last two years, done a number of things that has lessened the time it takes to vote. Not officially, because I don't think we've done any studies yet, but doing some things while the person's actually at the polls to make it a better experience and a more efficient experience. Uh, and so uh, I say this because when I'm approached, I, I use a lot of the anecdotal information I get from voters seriously because when we get into the rooms and committees, it, it, it actually mirrors. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm out visiting poll sites or I'm out speaking to voters one on one, it's the same complaints over and over again. I don't know where my poll sign is. It keeps changing. It takes too long to vote. Uh, I wasn't in the book. Uh, I don't get, I haven't actually gotten a complaint as of yet. I shouldn't say that. There isn't an outcry that people can't register. In other words, if somebody wants to register, it might take a little doing. But I think the access is out there, thanks to a much more part groups like you that really get out there. And now this local law 29 should help some as well. Uh, but I think it's on one side you have the board and other agencies reaching out to people to get them engaged. And now we have a large pool of people that are already vote, registered to vote. So they've already expressed the desire to, be want, to want to be part of the system. And we have to make it so that it is painless, easy, accessible, and so on. And if we can increase our numbers by doing real concrete things with the process, and that might include some real outreach to voters that are already registered. So something that I like, maybe not for this meeting or the next meeting, but long term, when we do outreach, we want to make sure that people know where their poll site is. You know, so it's, it's great to say I want to outreach and I want to uh, ask and implore people to register to vote. You know, and then what happens? If they don't know where their poll site is, or they're going to their poll site at 8:45 and they realize it's Change. really down the road, and now it's 9:02, and that happened to somebody who got a very angry call from somebody who's very close to me, and uh, you know, very real situation. Um, and so outreach, it's great we should do it on the front end, but in terms of administering elections, it should be constant, ongoing, and we really should have a constant communication with voters. Uh, I would much rather um, have somebody have to do a little bit more work to find a voter registration form than to tell somebody that um, they couldn't vote because their poll site changed and then something happened when they actually took the initiative to want to register on their own. So outreach has to be you know, beginning to end and ongoing. Well, it something. Yeah, uh, um, okay, I, I think I'm getting a cue from uh, <laughs> Vasquez that we do have another guest here, uh, uh, Seth Flaxman from Democracy Works. I think Val, you may have some yeah, data to you. enlighten us. I was going to share a bit of my story in? first, but I'll jump in with the data because that's always the most interesting. <laughs> um, but so, just some of the the data um, on voting. The census actually asks voters every two years why they didn't vote if they didn't vote, and um, in both presidential and midterm, so it doesn't change that much. About 60% of the reason is like a collection of about a dozen different process issues. So process is actually a bigger issue than apathy in terms of like the low-hanging fruit problems that we can solve just among the people in this room. Um, so anyway, that, I think that goes back to the point you're, uh, you were saying, um, that having a discussion about improving the process, like that, the data says that'll work. Um, and um, the process. Are you right. So, so um, I, why don't I go a bit into sort of uh, our organization, what we do, and I think that'll help address that. Um, but anyway, I, I love the work of NYC Votes. Um, Art Chang has been an advisor of ours as well, um, and um, so uh, we I run a nonprofit. Um, 
and we build technology uh, that makes uh, sort of voting easier. Um, and we specifically, we work, build technology for voters, and we also build technology for election officials. Um, and uh, sort of our story, my, or my story, uh, I actually, um, my background is as an economist, not a tech guy. Um, and um, about five years ago, I decided actually that I should have studied the internet. I should have studied technology. I studied the wrong thing. And um, became really uh, interested in the question why the internet was revolutionizing everything except the public sector, at least from, from my perspective. So I went to grad school to really study this. And um, while I was in grad school, I had this experience of like missing four elections. And I come from a very sort of political family, like not like run for office political, but like my parents used to go to every school board meeting and you know, th you know things like that. And I was like, so why, like, why am I missing all these elections? And each one for me personally was a different process issue. You know, forgetting the deadline they said in my new registration, um, you know, forgetting the deadline to apply to vote by mail, not knowing I needed to get a separate a second application for another absent, you know, all these different things you could imagine. Um, so I started looking online for a service where I could just sign up once and it would send me text message and email reminders about all my election dates and deadlines, so assuming the internet would have probably already built something like this. I wasn't in New York at the time. Um, and when I realized that this didn't exist, uh, this is what uh, we decided to try and build. Um, so we, we built a site, um, TurboVote, which was our first uh, pro program. And uh, the, the basic idea is that you know, someone signs up, they can then, we can help them register to vote, uh, we can help them vote by mail, um, and we can sign them up for text message and email reminders of all their election dates and deadlines. So for example, if you were, and it works all over the country, so you know, let's say you needed to register and you needed to vote by mail, something we could do is we could well, fill out those forms for you, mail them to you with a pre-addressed, pre-stamped envelope, and then just send you a text message reminder to sign it and return the envelopes by the deadline. Um, and so then anyway, we're, just, we're getting started with this, and that's what we really did the first year or so. And we uh, uh, mostly work with colleges and nonprofits. We work with around 220 colleges around the country uh, right now who sort of tie this into the you know, class registration or whatever. You sign up for TurboVote, you sign up for classes. We, we started at Harvard, and now We've been there for three years, and now when every freshman class, we get around a half of the freshman class signed up um, every year. And, um, but we knew that wasn't going to be enough, so we started talking to election officials to figure out, like, how can we actually um, provide, be useful to you guys? Like, how can we provide our technology in a way that is, you know, move the ball forward? Um, and as a nonprofit, to make sure that technology, good technology is affordable for government uh, that wants to do interesting things with it. Uh, so our first major program is something actually maybe a lot of people here have used or even um, they have friends or constituents who use it even though you didn't know we were behind it. So if you Googled your polling place last November, um, we were the ones actually collecting the data from election officials across the country, including in New York City, and then working hand in hand with Google so that uh, when you Google your polling place, <coughs> you could find out where it is. Um, and then in doing that, we sort of were able to talk with a lot of election officials, get a better understanding of their technology needs. And um, out of that, we're actually launching two <coughs> new um, pieces of tech. Uh, one is just a tool that lets election officials use text message and email. So, um, you know, for example, you guys could be sending text message reminders to anyone who gives you your... Uh, their Same number, or if they have a problem with something, you know, their problem with their absentee ballot form, you could text them and be like, hey, there's a problem with your absentee ballot form, here's what you need to do. Um, and, you know, in as many ways as possible, move things, uh, save the cost on mailings, um, and move things to email and text uh, to, you know, wherever possible. Um, and the, the second uh, tool we, we built um, tracks absentee ballots through the mail. I was actually <laughs> at a hearing this morning. Um, uh, talking about that where, uh, you know, we can help slap barcodes on absentee ballots to free postal service, um, IMB codes are a free postal service tool, and then give a dashboard to the election officials so they can see where all their ballots are in the postal system, and if, you know, there's a bunch of, a few thousand stuck in some postal facility, you'll actually know in time to call the postal facility and, you know, get them to fix it. <laughs> Which has happened. Um, I mean, I don't know about New York, but lots of election officials I've talked to in other cities, so they have horror stories of 
you know, realizing the last second their ballot stuck at a postal sorting facility, things like that. Um, so anyway, so that's, that's sort of what we, we do on the, the tech side, just to talk to some of the data uh, that you guys, you guys are talking about. Um, for me, the, the, the census data that 60% of the reason voters aren't voting a lot of elections is related to different process issues, and it's, it, which ones? It's all of them. I would say the largest is um, probably forgot, didn't know. Um, and the uh, election day, the election day, or just yeah, exactly. Didn't know, yeah, you know, didn't know. You're sending a simple text message like, t you know, today's election day. Here's your polling place. Could probably solve the bo a, a huge part of the problem. Um, but there's other stuff. There's you know, forgot to send in their absentee ballot by the deadline, or so um, it's not the process that we're going through. It's how, how do you people understanding the process, to the process in a timely manner. It's not something that we can specifically in the way of doing things. Right, you could think about it as process education, almost. Where it's like, it's about also... Communication. Yeah, communication. And, and it's also communicating through the tools that people are using. You know, it, you know you're, talk, um, you're talking about sort of people expect things to be like everything else. That usually means like get a text message. Um, something as simple as that can feel like it's, it's modernized to how they're living um, their, their daily life. And... Um, in terms of our uh, data, uh, in terms of our impact, so with the Turbo Vote tool, we've signed up around a quarter million uh, voters for it around the country, um, mostly through partnerships with our colleges and also a partnership with Google. Um, and uh, in 2012, what's the voter turnout rate? That's my question. Yes, yeah, so the voter turnout rate. <laughs> the punchline. Did you do you have a? We do. Yeah. We do. So and, and it's good, which is why I'm building up to it. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so uh, 2012, where the turnout nationally was around 56 percent or so. Um, of that 250,000. No, that was not. That was not. That was not us. That was just like. Oh, oh, you mean general turnout? General turnout. Yeah. Okay. So for us, if you were a first-time voter. Uh, using our site, you 75% turned out to vote, um, and it, that means that we helped you register, and then we also helped remind you to vote. Um, but then, if you were coming to our site and you were already registered, um, or were just changing your registration, turnout was 80% um, of our users. These are mostly college students, though, right? Um, it, it was about half. Sorry. About half the traffic came from our college partnerships. Um, the other half the traffic came from Google. And this was nationwide. This is right? nationwide. So you had to be uh, conversant or knowledgeable about all the okay. registration oh, requirements. Oh God! Yes, I'd be given a whole other hour telling that story, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and, so, and you're customizing the information that you were sending to people depending on where they live. Exactly. The, the The whole idea is that instead of just like having all of the information on a website where people still have to read right, through and right, peruse right. it, it's and text them exactly, which they don't want to do, is texting them exactly what they need for them personally. Um, See, if the candidates could figure out how to do this, they might be able to get their voters to the polls, right? Mm -hmm. Say, this is, I know this is what you care about. Right. So, so come out and vote for me. <laughs> so, I mean, so one of the things, that, you know, we're civic, uh, not political, um, so we, we don't work with parties That's or politicians. Right. We don't. Uh, right, either exactly. Either. Right, but we don't um, <laughs> uh, and and for me, I really see like the and this is why one of the reasons why we focused on working with colleges um, as a population um, and with nonprofits as well. Um, we work with a lot of nonprofits, um, uh, just not as many. Um, and but I really see like the, I think the big um, opportunity is to work with government. Um, and to find are you working with any local board of elections jurisdictions anywhere? In the um, we're we're working with around a dozen around the country right now. Um, no one obviously, it's impossible for anyone to be as large as New York, um, uh, Los Angeles County. Yeah, we, we are actually um, uh, talking to Los Angeles this week okay. about okay. our uh, our ballot scout tool, which is the the absentee ballot tracking um, stuff. And um, but you know we. With working with Google, uh, and this is also P Trust on the polling place um, data project, where in, you could Google where do I vote. You know, we were working with everyone. Um, we had to work um, in every. We had to, literally we, Google would only make the coverage, the data live, if we had 100% coverage. Um, and so we were. What does that mean? That means that like if we were missing, like if you we were missing a borough in New York City, they wouldn't make the data live. How about um, last minute like poll site changes? 
So if we have, so, how does that? So we, we have someone on our team who is like, to the last minute, actually making calls to you guys. Because the, 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 the election Sorry. officials have to approve it before we'll make it go live. Like, we get it all, you know, quality assured as best we can and ready. And then we give, we uh, talk to officials to give the final OK. And then Google makes it go live. Um, but, you know, and, and there's about like 25 states or so mm -hmm. uh, where the project is sort of in its closer to completion stage where we actually build technology for the state so that they can automatically check their polling place data and then upload it to Google without us needing to have our hands. And that's the, I mean, that's the future of the project. Let me ask um, you, what do you do about people who have cell phones? Do you have anybody to communicate with them? Um, so this is less about the, the, the Google and polling place, more about turbo vote. Yeah, so, so we also um, email. Um, we'll, we'll email you reminders, we'll text you reminders. Um, and if you're requesting a form, like you know, if you need a registration form, if you need a vote, an absentee ballot application, we'll also physically mail it to you um, with, you know, filled out with a uh, pre-addressed, pre-stamped envelope to return it in. Um, but usually, I mean, the, what the data says is that most, oh, the, there's a, only a very <coughs> small segment of the U.S. population who can't receive text messages. I mean, not everyone has smartphones, but the penetration for mobile phones is huge, huge. And, and, and especially even when you're talking about homeless populations, um, you're more likely to have a cell phone than anything else because that's your connection to everything, whether it's job, getting a job or... And where do you um, get a cell phone on uh, the, the, when they sign up on the site, so they, have to they, they give it to us. And, um, and we now collect, it's now on our latest voter registration form, right? Email. We email. ask for it anyway. It's an optional, it's an optional component right. because we provide their email contact. The next form that the state board puts out will ask it. Within for the last year's form it was added to, it will be on the 2015 yeah. version as soon as the party made it finalized. But what concerns me is that people have cell phones are usually a higher socioeconomic group. I'm concerned about the less uh, socioeconomic. I'd actually, I'd love to share data with you because it's no longer true. Yeah, no, 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 sort of my generation and younger generation just live in the world and you know everything they do starts online and no matter what you want to say, whether you want to talk to your friends you whether you want to get a book or watch a movie whatever the process is you start <coughs> online and when you have a voting process where that's not the first step necessarily the, the you know it just becomes more and more divergent over time and the voting isn't fitting the way these kids are living um, but at the same time um, you know, using mobile to get mobile text messages uh, to get in touch with um, poor populations is becoming the best practice, no matter what the field is. Um, and uh, I think most of the numbers on the form that we get are still cell numbers. When it says phone number there, it's mm -hmm. a cell when number. When they register. I would imagine it's easier for you to send them a text than an email. Let me throw in another yeah, piece of data that's, that's, that's right. counterintuitive. Right. Um, I'm a political scientist, mm -hmm. half and half, public and then poli sci. In New York City, our NYCHA developments have a higher voter turnout than the middle class mm. and working class neighborhoods surrounding them. Mm. So that's another another thing to be aware of. Yeah. I mean, I so it's not huh? it is not a car, direct correlation: low socioeconomics, low voter turnout. No. That's right. not what's happening here in New York City. Because they're, orga they're organized. And NYCHA commune, when they send out a notice, I guess it was not the rent notice, they, they're paying attention <laughs> when NYCHA sends out a letter. So if, if NYCHA, which is one of the agencies, for example, under local law 29, does an event, those are, our residents in public housing in New York City have to have a... Yeah, they're not... Well, they still, I know they still do this kind of work. They, do, they voluntarily. And they're, and they're residents, sure. The resident associations voluntarily, and they're, and they're highly organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And the convenience too, many of the housing developments, the pole sites are located either in the building or the community center. Yeah, we can stop yanking them out of their community rooms. Well, as soon as they make them a handicap accessible. <laughs> uh, well, well, they're probably going to say they don't have the money. That's, that's, that's another subject. That like, right, that's the big yeah. subject. I, I, I have a question, Steve. I just want to confirm. I think I know. But on the voter registration form, the, the, um, the field for a phone number is Option. also Option. optional. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Right. But the fact is, is that a person puts an email or a phone number on there as or public both. record. Or right. Both. Right. But we so do we, ask for an email address. Yes. We've yes. added yeah. that. Yeah. That was done at our request. The state board added that last year as an optional field. Okay. And it remains an optional field on the new form. Uh, we right. can gather it. Yeah. And then the question is, what do you do with it? I know that there are commercial vendors. Which yes, the day commercial have, companies are already grabbing co this. Commercial thing. political email vendors address as well. Yes, right. What yes. grabbing yes. this information as well yes. and using it. Um, right. Chair Kalos, this year, the last year, he didn't realize that it was available for sale and purchase before. Right. That's, that's the reason I'm hesitant to put my information down there. Yeah. I, I mean, I, and I would, um, a few just final thoughts, and I don't want to take up the, the air time, but um, I think, one, it, there is an opportunity, I think, for the board to use this data, the, the email and, and mobile phone data, um, because someone else is going to use it, and they're not going to, I don't think they're going to do as good as stuff with it. Um, I think, I mean, there's, the, there is, a, one of the most important research studies I've seen in this, actually, is they had, a reminder sent out to voters. Um, one that was branded as like your local, you know, sort of activist group. Another that was branded as the election officials. And the election official branded reminders had dramatically higher turnout. Voters want to hear from all of you more than they want to hear from anyone else. Um, and I think that's that's really important. And the second thing is is I think there's also an opportunity to um, uh, think about what other processes you could be moved to email. Um, to save on printing costs. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it could be asking for someone's email address could be a way to go green, um, where you know you can email them whatever the form is um, as opposed to needing to snail mail it. Um, and it could also be a way to, to save funds. You know, we do have the PDF version of the forms now on the website. They're going to be made as sort of the technology within the next several months, fillable. So in other words, you take the form, type in your information. All you have to do is just print it out, put your wet signature on it, and then mail it back to us. So that technology, to the extent it can be done. Other changes, such as electronic applications for voter registration, other than through the DMV system as the only authorized wet signature recipient, absentee voters, etc. that needs state legislation. Right now, these still need real signatures, just as to vote when you get to the poll site. We need your real signature. I don't know how electronic fact simile, but you have to actually take pen to paper. Mm -hmm. So is that on our agenda for lobby day? Or? So that's a that's is part that of it. It surely is. Yeah, that is on our agenda for lobby day. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And you have an electronic fact simile. Yeah. Well, Kavanaugh just um, introduced the bill for online registration through the state board of elections, mm -hmm. and it has a companion bill, and that is on our agenda to go up in April. So this goes back to like these are great uh -huh. tools. But some of them cannot be implemented mm -hmm. unless they are changed at the state level. And that's really what we're trying to do. So the two buses um, that we want to fill up and really push legislation to make real change. Um, yeah, this, I think, Steve, this is a question for you. The, um, the, the, the election law requires the annual notice to register yes. voters. Does it specifically say that it has to be printed, or could that be something that could be... That's email. Put a little the E in front of that, change the law. <laughs> I mean, that would make a big difference. That's a huge Again, expense. But, but, you, but you're dealing That's with people huge. who do not have, some do not have email. I'm thinking okay. about seniors particularly. Okay. There's always been the claim of that certain persons who have limited income may not have full access. Um, even when we all know, one of our regular visitors here uses the public library's computers to, right. to do his email access. No, Every, uh, and, and I'm just saying, so that, I think that's something, I think that's something that the, Basically, the, it's a discussion for another day. Right, yeah. and, and, the, and the fact is that notice also has, again, 
maybe the we the people don't know. It's not a deal. They have so much required legal information in there, too. It's not, it's not a glossy selling piece. No, no, that's, that's my point. I, I know the commissioners have other yeah. um, meetings after One this, but we can second. stay. We can yeah. stay yeah. and continue the discussion. I'll sit with you and talk. We just want to thank you. Anybody else want to make any final points? Oh, do you have anything? Monica? No. Okay. Monica's always where we've always partnered with with um, Sydney for all yeah. our outreach events, and they really been helpful. Right. helpful. Yeah. And I'll say that the, the board of elections comes with us uh, every month, also when we go to nationalization and swearing in ceremonies and registering new voters. There I was and wondering and, about New Americans. Maybe we can yes. put that on the agenda for the next time. Yeah, we we're very swearing successful. In. Yeah. So yeah. there's good cooperation okay. between the board and the two different courts. Um, mm -hmm. There is one final thought. There is a so we're funded most of it in the Knight Foundation. This is one of our major foundation backers, and right now they actually have a competition uh, where they're giving away three million dollars in grants uh, for things that deal with elections. Mm -hmm. um, and the it's open for another month and a half or so. But if that's something the board was interested in putting an application in for, I know the night folks really well and would be happy to you know talk about that well, online. Get that information we'll follow. We'll look at it. Okay. okay. Great. Anything else, commissioners? Have any other things? Right. I don't think we have a date for our next meeting, but we will, as soon as we do have one for next month, we will have that posted on the website. Yes. We invite you to come back. And thank you very much. Thank you for us. your participation. Thank you. So, commissioners, I'll just get the, the estimates and, and yep. email them to you. The additional yep. call. And let us know. Well, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.